And is the stalking for you uh, and the ambush, setting up the ambush sites and whatever else and finding those locations, is, is that as exhilarating for you as the actual archery itself? Like that, that requires a huge amount of energy and concentration to do that. I don't think, not for me personally, no, it's not nearly as satisfying as the, the you know, the actual act of shooting the arrow, but uh, there's sort of a deep satisfaction about it, you know, being able to read the trails and see which direction animals are moving and to be able to see what size the animal is, how old the tracks are. I, I appreciate uh, looking down on the ground and there were a lot of, you know, native cultures that really value tracking and, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's important. I think it's a good skill to have. If you're mm -hmm. just going out into the woods and setting up blind and you don't know how to identify sign or see what the animals are doing in the forest or which direction they're headed, I mean you're you're pretty much just uh, shooting in the dark. You've <laughs> got to understand anim animal behavior and animal movement if you want the best the best shot at success. So how, how do people learn all that stuff? You've just got to get out there. Yeah, I mean, uh, books are a great resource. There's there are a lot of great tracking books. Um, it's not really that hard to figure out, um, especially if you live in an area that gets rainfall or has softer soil. Um, you just got to get out there. Like, look look on the ground. A lot of people never look on the ground, and a lot of people never look up. They just look at eye level. But uh, just look down. You'd be amazed what you'll find. You can tell, I mean, if you go down to a creek bottom, for example, where there's a water source and just look down on the ground, you'll see tracks of all kinds of animals. There'll be maybe turkey tracks crossing through, raccoons, possums, deer, small birds jumping around. The ground tells the story of the forest. It's kind of like the, you know, the journal of what's been going on in a particular area. Mm. And you can also look low, you know, low in the trees where the deer have been rubbing or where maybe the beavers have been cutting trees down. Just, uh, Try to familiarize yourself and uh, go out and look at tracks. And if you're not sure, maybe bring a field guide, a tracking field guide out with you so you can identify the tracks and know what to look for as far as how many toes it has. Does it have, are there visible claws or not? Uh, yeah, it's just trial and error. But there's no, uh, there's no replacement for just getting out in the woods and getting some experience. Because you can read all day long, but uh, one day in the bush or especially one day in the bush with an experienced guide or an experienced teacher will teach you more than that, you know, dozens of books of just sitting in the house and reading it, never actually seeing what they look like in real life. Yeah. That's about, um, somebody the other day was talking to me about foraging for mushrooms and saying like, ignore the books because you'll poison yourself. If you read the books, because the books can't teach you everything that you need to know. And you'll just end up, uh, it, you'll screw it up. So better to go with somebody who knows who actually can show you the, the same mushroom, but like four different variations of it in different seasons and different weather conditions. And you can actually start, appreciating what it is the book isn't enough uh that's cool absolutely so and my family is really big into the mushrooms we uh my dad he studies mushrooms and, and and collects all of the mushrooms from the forest and tries to identify them and he's, he's very proficient and we do a lot of mushroom hunting and there's there would be no replacement for going out there and a lot of people are very afraid of of fungus because there are different species out there that can kill you they're few and far between, but, uh, you know, there are quite a few of them out there that could give you seriously upset stomach or, or vomiting or, you know, headaches. But, uh, if, if you want to learn about mushrooms, it's really not that, that scary. You can pick, like I always tell people to pick their core five or their core 10, depending on how into it you want to be, but you can easily in most regions, pick a core five edible mushrooms that are one easy to identify, uh, plentiful, uh, they grow in different seasons. Like maybe you've got two mushrooms that grow in the spring and two or three or four mushrooms that grow in the fall. So you know that uh, if they're growing out of season, that's not what you're looking for. And uh, just stick to your core five because there are so many mushrooms in the forest, thousands of them. I mean, if you pay attention to the ground, you'll see in one day a uh, hundred different species at, at least. So unless you want to be a mycologist, <laughs> uh, just, uh, learn the court, learn the core five edibles in your area and, uh, learn how to do spore prints and learn how to identify, you know, pores versus gills and things like that. And, uh, yeah, stick to the core five. You'll be good. There's a bounty of edible mushrooms out there in most regions and they're delicious and totally safe. I love it. Cause most people try and learn everything that there is to learn. Whereas actually what you're saying is like find five 
know know your shit about the five and stick to that and life will be good absolutely yeah i'd never ever consume a mushroom on a maybe don't i mean if you're even nine if you're 95 percent sure and not not 100 percent sure you gotta let it it just if you're unsure you gotta leave it lay so it's so much easier just to memorize and know without without a shadow of a doubt that uh you know your core five are safe and they're everywhere so they're easy to to spot that's the way to go i love it i love it is that as um uh, intriguing for you is the archery the sort of foraging and wild foodie type stuff i would say that's pretty equal yeah i spend a lot of time researching edible plants and medicinal plants and edible mushrooms so i definitely like to forage in most of the environments that i find myself in try to familiarize myself with you know mountain edibles for when i'm out there or desert edibles and uh definitely the local edibles here and what we have which is basically eastern woodlands forest 